What's up, Metalheads? I'm Jamie. This is the Blades and EDC channel. Thank you guys so much for being here. If you're new, please consider subscribing. And if you enjoy this video, hit that like button for me. All right, guys. Uh, today we're going to do some anodizing. Uh, this knife was sent to me by ID to get some anodizing work done. She wants to anodize the pocket clip and the backspacer to try to get a darker blue to match the hardware. I think we can get it really close. I do notice that this pot clip does have a few snail trails on it, so those will probably still show up, but I think we can get a lot darker. This is a high voltage blue that's on the pocket clip in the backspacer right now. We're going to go with a low voltage blue, more like a blurple color almost, and try to get it as close to that as we can. I'm curious if this hardware is even anodized or if that is actually like coated blue because it's bright, bright blue. Now, this did not come with this thumb stud. This is an aftermarket thumb stud. Um, but yeah, let's take this thing apart real quick. I just want to confirm this hardware is actually titanium also. And we'll figure that out when we disassemble it. All right, we'll start with the pocket clip. I'm going to assume T6. And I was correct. It is T6. All right. All right, we'll sit those up here, pocket clip spot. Oops. These look like maybe T8. Yeah, those are T8s. Let's check these screws because I'm looking at them. The screws aren't anodized. It's just the top of them. Those have been coated. Um, I want to make sure they're actually, they're not magnetic. So maybe they are titanium, but I do not, that does not appear to be an anodization. I'm not sure how they got that color blue. I don't know if we can get it quite to match, but we can get it pretty close. All right. T8 on the pivot also. Open her up. It's tight around that pivot. It's coming loose down the butt of the knife, but it's tight around that pivot screw. There we go. Ooh, she needs a good cleaning too. She's a dirty girl. She is a dirty, dirty, dirty girl. I'm not talking about you, ID. I'm talking about the knife. <laughs> All right. We'll clean it up. Yeah. Lots of lube in this one. Lots and lots of lube in there. You can use too much lube, just so you know. You don't really need quite that much, because the more you get in there, the more stuff that's going to stick in there from your pocket, and it's just going to gunk your knife up quicker. So... Uh, you know, I personally just like to put a coating on the knife. All right, there's the backspacer. So, we're going to take these over to the anodizing station. Oh, I need to check these screws and see if they are titanium. I don't know if these light bar insert screws are titanium or not. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. If they are titanium, we'll try to anodize those blue also. Just take one out, see if it's magnetic. No, those are still. I was afraid of that. So we will not be able to anodize those screws. Unfortunately. All right, so let's go do this. I'm going to pause this, but it'll be just momentarily for you guys and take the camera over to where I anodize and uh, we'll clean, show you, I'll show you how to do the anodizing real quick. I had one of my viewers, subscribers, ask me if I could show my anodize and I told him I had a, 
uh, a series showing how to anodize, but I'm going to just give you the quick basics real quick over there. So I'll bring you guys over there with me. I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we are at my anodizing station. The camera may be moving a little bit. I'm going to try to make it do that as little as possible. I don't have the same setup here as like I have at my desk. So I'm going to uh, just do this really quickly. First off, I'll let you know, I'll link everything I use to anodize in the description below. Um, you can get it all on Amazon. Uh, if you want consistent color and it to come out consistently every time, you're better off getting a power supply and, uh, you know, it, it'll just work better for you in the long run. And if you're just doing one part here, one part there, you can even use nine volt batteries in, in a, a relay and get different voltages. So, um, you can look up a video on how to do that. Um, most important thing with anodizing is preparing your material to anodize. Um, you know, cleaning it extremely well. You want to get all oils off the titanium before you anodize it. Uh, any oils that are on there will affect your finish in the end. And you want to use rubbing alcohol, 91%, to clean the titanium. You should also probably use, like, gloves, nitrite gloves or nitrile gloves, whatever they're called. Um, I'm not going to do that on here because I just washed my hands extremely well before I started this. Um, but, uh, and then after I get done wiping these off, what I will do, while they're still wet, wherever I was touching, I'll grab another paper towel and just dry it off. And from there, I'm not going to touch that titanium anymore. Anodizing is actually a fairly easy process. Uh, another good thing that you're always going to want to do is you don't want to use tap water and you don't want to use like well water either. Definitely don't want to use city water, well water. Well water has got a lot of minerals and stuff in it, will, which will contaminate, you know, your your electrolyte solution. And city water is going to have all kinds of chemicals in it just to clean it so you can drink it, right? So you're better off, you always want to buy distilled water. Buy gallons or like, this is a big... I can't remember how many this is. Distilled water. That's what you want to use. And your electrolyte solution is mixed with distilled water and baking soda. Basically, you fill up, you know, your distilled water water in there. And I put like three or four spoonfuls in there. And you just stir it until it vanishes into the water and the water's clear again. Uh, you need titanium wire to make a coil into your uh, electrolyte solution. And titanium wire to hang your... Uh, your parts on to anodize them and to clean them. Uh, the titanium wire will be linked down there also. You will also need Winx rust and stain remover um, and a container to put it in. Also containers for all this stuff. Uh, polycarbonate containers I believe is what they're called. Again it's all linked in the description below. This is uh, Winx in here. I've used it a bunch. Last time I used it it was a little weak. Uh, it took a little while to take the color off so I'm going to add a little more in there. This is nasty stuff, okay? You do not want to get this stuff on you. This is nasty, nasty stuff. Um, lots of acid in there. It will burn you if you get it on your skin. Um, it is poisonous, so be careful using this stuff. And use gloves. Do as I say, not as I do. Right? All right, so. Let's, uh, I don't want to touch that titanium. So I'm going to hook it on my wire here. And I'm going to dip it. Oh, let me, this is just, just plain distilled water, which after it's, the color comes off, I'm going to dip it in the distilled water to rinse it. And then I'm going to dip it in my electrolyte solution real quick just to neutralize any acid that may be left on there. So I'm going to try to get this where you can see it. But you'll see this start to fizz and all that color will come off. The light blue that's already on there. See, it's coming off already. It's turning back to like a gray titanium. So it's done. Just a few seconds all you need. Rinse it in the distilled water. Dip it in the electrolyte solution, which has the baking soda in it, in it, which will neutralize any acid that may have been left in that titanium. So it stops etching in at that point. I got another piece of titanium wire here. I'm going to do the same thing to the back spacer. Just find the hole, Jamie. Find the hole, man. All right, dip it in there till the blue goes away. Four or five seconds, usually all you need. There we go. 
rinse and neutralize the acid, right? And then we have a ground wire here off our power supply and we have our positive here. Our ground wire is gonna to connect to the coil that I made and put in there. Our positive will connect to the wire holding our part. I'm gonna do these at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is take this, actually let's close up this nasty stuff here real quick. We don't need it anymore. We don't want that open. We don't wanna spill that nasty stuff or get it on us. So get that out of the way. What I'm gonna do here, fold this down. And I'm gonna take that backspacer off that other wire, hang it on there with this wire, do them both at the same time. And I'm not gonna touch anything, right? Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna clean them again. So we're gonna dry them off, then we're gonna wipe them down with rubbing alcohol one more time, rinse them, and then we're ready to anodize. A lot of people will say there's no need to clean them again right here. It may not be, uh, but in my opinion, it's not gonna hurt. It really, with anodizing, preparation is the most important part. Cleaning your materials, getting them properly clean, getting all oils off of them, debris, everything off of them is gonna give you the best result you can get. The anodizing part's easy, you know? You look up a chart online for titanium anodizing, it will show you different colors with different voltages. And uh, you just set the power supply to the voltage you want to get the color you want. And it's pretty simple. Uh, the power supply does all the work for you. Your main job is to prepare the titanium and uh, so you don't have any issues. Because I have, you know, when I first started doing this, there were times where um, I didn't clean the oils right and I'd anodize and I'd have a spot that was different color than the rest of the titanium. And what that was was I still had the oils from my skin on it or oils from somewhere on it and uh, it just didn't take the Take the color right. But, you know, when that happens, all you got to do is repeat the process, clean it, etch it in the acid solution again, and anodize it again. So, All right. We're going to dip those. We're going to rinse these. Make sure any contaminants from that alcohol are off of there. So they should all be. And then I gotta go look at the voltage. I believe the voltage, actually I don't need to look it up. Um, the voltage is gonna be right around between 20 and 30. We'll start at 20, check the color, and go up from there. So I'll turn our power supply on. I'm gonna turn our voltage all the way down to 20 and start there. I'm sorry for the count the camera bouncing, guys. Nothing I can do about it. Hopefully the iPhone has some good auto stabilization here. You're actually, the mount my phone is on is clamped to the chair I'm sitting in. I don't have anything else over to clamp it to to where it can reach. So we're gonna clip our negative onto our coil. Something else that's very important, never let your titanium touch your negative. <laughs> if you do, you're gonna melt your titanium. You're gonna mess it up uh, beyond repair at that point. So we're gonna take this out, we're gonna clip our positive. Then we're gonna dip these down in there. And you're going to see these amperage number go crazy. When that amperage number settles down and stops, we've achieved the 20 volt anodizing. Um, we'll check the color. Turn, we're probably going to turn it off, I'm pretty sure already. So you see some fizzing going on in there. See that voltage lowering down. It'll get to a point. This is going to probably give us more of a, bra a bronze or a purple. Yeah, we're done there. So let's see what color we got here. So it's more of a purple there. Um, going right from bronze to purple at that voltage. We're just gonna go up one, let's go up two volts, go up 22. And we'll go back in. And that'll only take a second because we're only going up two volts, so. I'm probably going to have to go look at the chart, too. I'll pause this video so it'll, it won't, it'll be instant for you guys. Just to make sure. I don't... Because if you go... Pat, once you go to a high voltage, you can't go back down, right? 
I can keep anodizing as long as I go up in voltage and I don't have to re-acid etch it and rinse it and do and wash it again. I can just keep going up in voltage, but I can't go back down. Once you get to a high voltage, you can't change the color back down unless you etch it and strip the color off of it. So I'm going to pause this. I'll be right back. I need to go look at the chart real quick. All right, I'm back. And it looks like 25 is going to be about as high as we can go before it starts to get darker. Right now we're at that blurple color. I don't know how well the camera is going to show this. So, uh, I like that dark purple blue color. I'm going to go up to 23, go one bolt at a time. And uh, like I said, we're not going to be able to exactly match that hardware because that hardware is not anodized, it's coated. Uh, but we get as close as we can get it. It'll be a lot closer than what she had. So we'll go up to 23 volts. And go back in. Be careful if you do this too, guys. Obviously, electricity and water, you know. I shouldn't have to tell you that, but I'm going to say it anyway. All right, we've leveled out on our amperage. Dry this off, see what we got. Nice deep dark. It looks black almost on my camera is what it's looking like, but it's not. It's blue, more of a blurple. That may be it right there. I'm gonna go up one more volt to 24. Try to get a little more blue, a little less purple in it. I'm a crazy person. All right. OCD's some real shit, just in case you weren't aware. All right, let that amperage settle down to where it's not going down anymore. There we go. We're good. All right, I'm going to turn this off now because I don't think we're going to be able to go any higher than that before we start getting lighter in color. Um, I'm wondering what that coating is on those screws, if it'd be possible to remove that coating. Problem with that, though, is that thumb stud she's got on there is coated, too. And uh, so I think this is probably about as good as we're going to be able to get it. As close of a match as we're going to be able to get it. It's very blue now, right? You grab the pocket clip, it'll probably show up a little better on camera right off very blue definitely a different blue than on her pocket clip but much much darker and closer to what she's looking for so all right i'm gonna pause you and bring you back over to the desk we'll put it back together and we'll do the comparison between the original hardware and this hardware all right guys we're back over here now and uh here is the pivot, which is coated, not anodized, and it has a more of a polished finish on it. And here is the pocket clip. So obviously we're not a perfect match, but since this is not anodized, I, I'm not going to be able to get this exact color here, unfortunately. Um, wish I could, but it's definitely a lot closer than it was So from where we started. I think ID will like it. So... Um, Let's clean up this knife real fast, this dirty girl. And I left my rubbing alcohol. I'll be right back. Alright. Got the rubbing alcohol from the anodizing spot. And, uh piece of microfiber here we're gonna soak and clean up everything there's bearings and the scales lots of lots of oil on these on this knife Alright, let's 
wipe that down. Much better. Much better. Now let's do these bearings. Much better. Do the pivot. The pivot screw. And I think we'll be good to go now. All right. Yeah, I can still see a couple of snail trails on the pocket clip, but still, it turned out really good in my opinion. All right, let's drop, put the pivot in there. We have a captive pivot. Okay, it needs to face that way. Pivot was tight fit in here. There we go. Give, grab us a doodad and some lube. And we're just going to put a coating on everything. Put a coating on the washer that's in there. Drop a bearing in there. Coat the bearings. Go ahead and coat around the actual pivot itself. Get us a little more lube. Need to clean the blade too. I never cleaned the blade. It's really dirty also. I'm gonna clean that hole out real good too. There we go. Alright. Let's drop the blade on there. And uh lube around here. Put this there. Actually, let's wonder if that bearing will stick on this other side. I would put some lube in there because the hole in that bearing is a lot bigger than that pivot. But these are cut out in the scales to keep it secure. Will that stay? Yeah, with some lube it'll stay. All right, and we're going to clean that lube off. And we're going to grab some heavy lube for the detent ball. And the Detent hole. Hmm. And I tell you, this bottle, I struggle with this bottle from KPL with this heavy stuff. It just does not work well for the thicker lube. All right, we're going to put a little right there, go right down our detent track, and go and put a little bit on our detent ball. And that's all the lube you need. All right, let's drop our backspacer on there. I think we're good. That bearing will stay and go where I want it to go, we are. Yeah, we're good to go. Put that screw in there. Finger tighten it for now. Can't remember. I think these were T8 also. So it's not a perfect match, as you can see, but compared, it's got oil on it to wipe it down and I'm done, but it's a lot darker than it was. And it's as close as you're gonna be able to get it uh, doing normal anodization. Centered, but we haven't even tightened that pivot yet, so. There we go, dead centered. Are we too tight? 
No, we're not too tight. No blade play. The Gemini is such a good knife. Affordable. You can get them in carbon fiber. There's some more budget friendly versions also. Let's throw that pocket clip on there and we'll wipe it, clean it all up. Actually, let's go to make sure these are tight first. You see, these are steel screws on the pocket clip also. They're not, not titanium. I think it kind of looks better anyway, so that the screws match at least. These four screws, the pie clip screws and the lock bar insert screw, are silver. All right, let's get some more rubbing alcohol on this paper towel and wipe it down. All right, guys, there we go. Let's get the uh, disassembly mat out the way. You get better color that way. With this being blue in the background, it kind of throws the, the uh, camera color off. I need to get one, see if I can find one of these that are gray, a disassembly mat, anyway. That way it doesn't throw the colors off for everything behind it. Uh, obviously not a perfect match but much darker than it was before uh, it's much lighter blue before so we got much darker color there I think I do like it I'll actually give her access to this video in advance so she can go and watch it and uh, before it goes live on YouTube so thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions about anodizing comment below let me know or you can always DM me on Instagram and like I said I'll link everything I use for uh, anodizing in the description box below. Thanks guys and I'll see you on the next one.